there are two types of sweetlet one is called as front end sweetlet another is called as a back end sweetlet so in our previous video we have seen how to build this front end sweetlet now let's see what is this back end sweetlet so in order to know the back end sweetlet i have created a small script a sweetlet script 2.0 version and we all know what is the server request and server response is used for and also we have seen this get and post options so right now i have added a single condition called as request dot method is equal to post if the request made to this particular sweetlet is post i'm going to gather the comments which is coming from my body level and i'm just going to check whether this comments is empty or not if the comments which i receive on this sweetlet request url is empty i'm going to send the response as f if the comments value is not empty i'm going to send the response as t a string value so this is a client script so this is a basic function or basic entry point a save record entry point which is deployed on customer record so whenever customer record is being saved it's trying to get the value from the field called comments and you can see there is a url dot result script api and there is another api called as https dot post i'll just shortly explain what it is doing so in order to understand what is this api does and what does this https dot post api does let's go back to netsuite so coming to url module if you search for a url module in the help center there are multiple apis available in this url module so one of the api which i use is resolve script so in this url dot resolve script api returns an external url or an internal url to a script so we have deployed this sweetlet and in the sweetlet deployment we know there is a url and this is called as a internal url and whenever we make this checkbox check let's say i'm going to edit this and if i check this checkbox and if i save it you can see there is another url coming as external url so right now we have an option of getting an internal url or an external url using this url dot resolve script api so in order to do that i'm going to make use of this url dot resolve script api and there is an option for this api parameter called as return external url so by default it will be false if i need an external url i can pass it as true so right now in my script i have just left it as it is so it, there is two parameters one is script id and deployment id if i just go back to script deployment of the sweetlet we have the deployment id here and if i go to the script record we can see the script id here so these are the ids which i have pasted here and this is going to provide me an internal url and the next api which we are using is https.post api so let's see what is this https.post api so i'm going to go back to netsuite account so if you search for https module in your netsuite account and if you just open that link you should be able to see multiple apis for https so one of the api which i use this is https.post api and there is another api called as https.get api also the reason why i have used post api is in our sweetlet we have added a condition for method as post so whenever i use this https.post the method which is going to be called in sweetlet is post method so that is the reason i have used this https.post so this api accepts multiple parameters like body url credentials address so in my client script i have just used the url which is a sweetlet url which is an internal url and in the body i am passing the comments which i am trying to retrieve it from the customer record so whenever this sweetlet receives that request from client script as a post request it is trying to retrieve the value of comments and checks whether it is empty or not based on that it is going to send the response so once i receive the response from this sweetlet i am trying to check whether the response is false if the response is false i'm just throwing an alert message which says comments are empty please fill the comments and i am not allowing the user to save that record and this is how the back end sweetlet is also used so it is not like more of a front end sweetlet like how you navigate to some specific navigation and then when you click on this link it just opens some front end ui so we can use this for some back end logics so another advantage of this back end script is So, for example, we have this client script deployment done on a client record or a customer record, where we don't see an option of execute as role. So, when it comes to the sweetlet deployment, we have an option of execute as role, which is administrator. So, one of the main advantages, if someone is logged in Netsuite as some other role other than admin, and is trying to access some other record which he does not have any permission, and in that case, in your script, if you are doing any kind of Uh, stuffs like searching or loading a record of sales order. Let's say sales order. You're trying to load a record of sales order in your client script, and the current role does not have any permission for that. So in those cases, there could be an issue like permission issues. So in those cases, we can make use of this sweetlet called backend sweetlet, 
and this backend switch that you can load that sales order and perform whatever logic you want and send the response back to client script and the other advantage is uh, the client script code can be easily exposed on the browser side so it's better to use some kind of backend script so now let's test our uh, backend switch that so in order to do that i want to navigate to list relationships clients in case it's going to be customer so i'm going to click on new and i'm going to enter some name in the company name and then primary subsidy i'm going to choose it as headquarters and if you see the comment section right now it is empty let's click save and where our client script save record function will be get executed so let me save and you can see that comments are empty please fill the comments i got a response back from the switchlet after validating and now it says comments are empty please fill the comments from the i just click okay and if i just enter some value and then if i save now the record has been successfully saved now let's go back to the script deployment of Bitlet. and if i just go to execution log and refresh we can see first time it was empty so it has responded to it has responded as false second time we entered some value in the comment section so it has responded with true value so if i just go back to my client script also if i check the execution log we can see the whole response so from this response i've been capturing the value of body which is response dot body so we can see the response body somewhere here we can see this body here which has a value of true on the previous log we could see that body value is false so this is how we have done the logic in our client script if the response or body value is false we are displaying this warning message or the alert message